Access is everything. That's today's topic in today's Deconstructing Photography. Welcome to another Deconstructing Photography. Today's episode is another installment in our photojournalism series. Today we're talking about the access needed for news photography. It should probably go without saying that access is very important when it comes to news photography. In fact, it's probably very important in most photography. But it might be the most important part of news photography. If you can't see what's going on, you can't take a photograph. So I thought we'd analyze that a little bit today. Talk a little bit about access, how you get access, the uh, difficulties around getting access in a typical day as a news photographer. One of the most stressful parts of being a news photographer through the years was trying to get access to breaking news. Trying to figure out the location of where you need to be. Trying to figure out what you're hearing on the scanner. Trying to translate that into, is this something I need to be concerned about? Is this something I need to try to find? Since we spent so much time listening to the scanner, most of the time you could tune out a good portion of what's going on. But every once in a while something would stand out and you would it catch your attention and you would... Try to figure out, is this something I need to be uh, concerned about? <laughs> is this something I'm, I'm need to go photograph? And then there are times where if, if uh, emergency crews were called out, like fire, fire department, they would have a tone out. So anytime there would be a tone out, you would you'd listen to the tone and, and then they would give you the location. And nowadays we have apps like Pulse Point that also help uh, tell where this event is going on, if it's a, a wreck or a, a fire. Of course, there are also times where it's not a tone out. It's just you hear something that sounds a little off on the scanner, somebody talking back and forth about something. That's a little more difficult. That's Then you've got to really try to tune in to what they're saying and, and try to figure out where they're at. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And that usually is a, a law enforcement kind of thing. If there's a phrase like, shots fired, boy, then you really your ears perk up and you re everybody's scrambling trying to figure out what is going on. We've got reporters calling calling dispatch trying to trying to figure it out. Once we have a fairly good idea of where we're going, then we hit out the door not really knowing what we're going to see, but we know there's something that we that we should see. So we get out the door and and we head that direction. Since I worked in a county at a countywide paper, we had a lot of agencies to deal with. We had sheriff, we had state police. Each town had their local law enforcement. In each town had fire, their own fire departments and volunteer firefighters and that, that kind of thing. So each time you went out, you could keep that in mind. Who Who is it you're going to most likely be dealing with when you go out to this either emergency or, or fire or wreck or whatever the event is? So when dealing with law enforcement, police, I would always just assume that they're going to have a hostile attitude towards me. They never wanted us there. They never wanted <laughs> a photographer there. I, I would go to where I needed to be to take the photo. Now, you can't cr ever cross tape. Yellow, a yellow tape, you don't cross that. You just, against the rules. But if, this, if there's nothing marked and, and you're staying out of the way, you just got to go to get the shot. You go where you need to get the shot. And there will be times where they'll they'll come over and tell you 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 can't be here. You got to move out of the way. Or they've got you so far back, already having a barricade up, that you can't see anything. And it doesn't hurt to ask. Well, it doesn't hurt to try to get closer. I'd never ask the question, "Where can I be?" It would be more like, "Would it be okay if I stood over here by this tree, or behind this car? If I didn't move any further?" Uh, closer to the scene instead of just leaving it up to them I would point out where I thought I needed to be and, and I wouldn't be greedy I have a long lens with me I've got an 80 to 200 70 200 maybe even longer telephoto is a good place to start you don't we don't need to be getting in their faces with a wide-angle lens 
especially when they're trying to do their jobs. You've got to understand that they're they're under some stress depending on what the scene is. It could be a fatal wreck or something like that. Um, there, there is some stress on them as well. So if you can just point out to a spot where you want to be, and often they would say, sure, okay, that, that would be fine. If I was to say, where can I be? They would just say, well, here's fine. <laughs> here's not where I need to be. Over there's where I need to be. So if they don't want to accommodate what your needs are, don't argue with them. You're never going to win an uh, argument with, with law enforcement on a scene. What you need to do is just look for another angle. Look for another, come in from another direction. Look for uh, a, a side road, uh, Another go down another block. Try to get some elevation. There are a lot of different approaches. you got to be creative sometimes to, to get at least some, some visual, something that you can see that you can take back to the office. If all else fails, take a photograph of the blockade. But you, that's really kind of the last ditch thing. Before you, you head off to your next idea, shoot a picture of where you were, something that, that says there's law enforcement, there's, there's fire, there's something here that would indicate it's some kind of emergency situation. Now, if, if the officer lets you get closer or works with you to, to get you a spot, sometimes they'll actually take you to a spot. They'll say, I'm going to go take care of some business real quick. I'll come back and get you and I'll get you a little closer. You've got to work with these people. And if you abuse that, that trust, if, if, you, if they've given you some place that you can go and they're working with you, you need to make sure you don't abuse that by creeping in closer or going to a different spot. So odds are you'll probably run into this officer again at some point. And this is where you're starting to build relationships with these people. So they'll, they'll trust you in the future on something that may be even more dramatic or something that's more intense. They'll, they'll, they'll know and trust that you're going to be professional and do what you say you're going to do. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're dealing with these people. Don't argue with them. Comply as best you can and be professional. And if, the, if you're not getting what you need, you're going to have to figure out another way to get it. Just can't. You're just not going to argue your way into that position. Now, it's at this point where you've got to decide, if I leave here and look for a better angle, am I going to miss everything? Look at the time it takes to move. Or you decide, do I stay here and just get what I'm getting? Sometimes you can get, you're getting a little bit, but you think, eh, if I went just down there a ways, down past this fire engine over here or something, maybe I could get a different angle in on what's going on. But you've got to consider that the time you take from here to there, it could be over. It, you could miss everything. So it's always that little roll the dice. <laughs> or it may mean you have to get in your car and drive around to a whole nother, other side of what's going on, another side of the scene that you have to take another road in to approach it. I remember going to a, a uh, flooded road rescue part of the road was washed off and a car was washed off off the road and someone was trapped in their vehicle. So I, I get to the location and I can just barely see what's going on. There was like a little bend that, that I could not see very well around. To get to the other side of the road, I would have to go all the way out, out of town. I mean, it was quite a distance. So I had to decide, do I stay here and just try to get something get a picture of a vehicle or uh, maybe a, a jet ski going out in the water? Or do I gamble and risk that they're going to be done, everything's going to be over by the time I get to the other side? I do make my way around and I get to the other side and my gamble paid off. I actually had a much better view of the rescue and it was still going on when I got there. The person was an elderly man that was trapped in his vehicle. He had about six inches of air between the roof and and the water line, and they were able to, to extract him out of there and, and take him to the hospital, and so he survived. Sometimes there are events that go on that require the, the uh, law enforcement to cordon off many blocks worth of uh, space around whatever's going on, maybe a hostage situation, bomb threat, whatever. And it makes it tough to get to where you can see anything. Sometimes you have to probe the edges. You have to kind of 
uh, start at one point where you see something, get a photograph or two, and just keep probing the edges, keep moving along till you can find another view of, of uh, what's going on. In, in the case of this incident here, there was a, a hostage situation in a liquor store. The police were staged a ways away, and so I started where I could see the police, and I got a couple shots, some atmospheric stuff, and then worked my way a block or two over down probing to see if I could see enough through the streets, get to the other end where the road was closed off, see if there was another angle and at some point I came across a spot where I could get into where I could see I was behind a bush or something, able, able to see well enough at the front of the store that if they were going to go in and do something, I'd be able to get a shot. But I had to kind of probe the edges. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a very easy thing to do. It was very physical. It took a lot of, of running, <laughs> a lot of uh, physical activity. And that, that could be the case for a lot of things. There are times where there may be, the road may be closed because of something going on down the road. It could be a half a mile down the road. There are times where they won't let you go. Somebody that, that's at the, uh, where the road's blocked off may not let you go or just don't have the authority to let you go. Maybe they're just, their job is just to keep the road closed. And so at that point, you have to decide if there's no other way to get down there, Am I going to spend all that time and energy um, trying to get a photograph? And, and there were times where you did. You just grabbed your cameras and you just hoofed it down the road. And every once in a while, you get lucky enough that the person that was blocking traffic recognized that you were there for a job. And, and they, they said, well, just go down and just stay out of the way. And that was, that was always welcome. I remember one time hearing some chatter on the scanner. And I couldn't figure out where it was, what was going on. And, and I, somewhere I, I, heard a, I heard a side street or somebody was telling another officer how to get there. So I started heading that direction and thought, well, I'll go check this out. It, it sounded a little different, a little odd. And so I see a, a car down, down the street. So I, I pull over and I park and I just kind of start walking down towards the uh, squad car. Then I see a, a, um, a police officer with his gun drawn pointing over the hood of a car and another one was heading running down the sidewalk towards me <laughs> and I just walked right up on a scene where there was a, a standoff going on and I didn't realize that I was not aware that I was like right in the middle of it and they they uh, quickly let me know that I shouldn't be there <laughs> I got a photograph and, and I got out of the way you got to be aware of your surroundings it can be dangerous. I, I've gone to a fire in the middle of the night, stormy, bad weather, and the uh, house was lit up with, with the lights that they would use. And I'm, I'm taking pictures, thinking, well, I'll get a few shots and I'll get out of here because it was, it was late. And all of a sudden, these, these firefighters are yelling at me. And I'm thinking, what, what are they yelling at me for? They, they never yell at me like that before. <laughs> and it, they were telling me, don't, you know, I couldn't understand what they were saying to me. And, and finally, when the one ran up to me, he said, don't move. <laughs> he said, you're, you're three feet away from a hot power line. And, and of course, then I, it was dark. So I, I look over and there was definitely a power line hanging there. And, and I felt so stupid because I, I, I go up to this fire. I didn't pay attention to what was going on over here. I'm just looking right at what's going on over here, right at the where the lights were and in the dark here there was death dangling to get me and luckily they they saw me there and and uh of course i promptly moved out of the location <laughs> but once i got my shots i was out of there well i hope these this little this little bit of information has been of some interest to you if you're considering a, a career in photojournalism you might start in a newspaper, or it might be something that you make a career out of. These are the things you're going to be faced with in the modern day. It's the same as it was in the old days. You still got to have access. You still got to be able to see what's going on. You may have to shoot some video while you're down there. You may be sending images from your location, but you still have to see 
what's going on to make your images. So I'm gonna end today's video right here. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.